Hi, I'm Joel Paulson, the Executive Director for the Metro Flood Diversion Authority, with some information about how the Fargo-Moorhead Metro Diversion Project will be paid for. Implementing any large infrastructure project like this requires careful planning for not only how to pay for it, but also how to manage potential cost escalation and risk along the way. When you buy a home, you typically need cash to fund the down payment, as well as a loan to cover the rest of the cost. Pretty simple, right? But what does that combination of funding and financing look like when it's not a home, but roughly a $3 billion infrastructure project? Well, it's still much the same, but with multiple sources of funding and financing, it can appear pretty complicated. So I'll break it down for you in this video. There are two avenues for paying for the project and its operations. One involves funding sources, such as grants and appropriations, that don't need to be repaid. Think of this as if your parents or a friend gave you cash for the down payment on your house. The second route is financing, which needs to be paid back, just like the mortgage on your home. On the funding side, the FM Area Diversion benefited from federal, state, and local contributions. They essentially said, this project is really needed. Let us help. So the federal government contributed $750 million, North Dakota and Minnesota added in another $936 million, and Fargo and Cass County voters, who will receive the most benefit from the project, strongly supported adding sales taxes to fund even more. Altogether, the local funding adds up to about $1.2 billion. On the financing side, lenders recognized the benefit of the diversion and agreed to incredibly low interest rates. The U.S. Environmental Protection Agency noted the project's ability to increase resilience to climate change and provided a $569 million Water Infrastructure Finance and Innovation Act loan for 2% and North Dakota followed suit with a $55 million loan. Another $280 million in financing came from the U.S. Department of Transportation private activity bonds. Over the course of a 30-year mortgage, interest adds up quickly. Acquiring a $300,000 30-year loan with about a 5% interest rate will require roughly $580,000 to pay it off. That's a lot of interest. By negotiating lower interest rates, there can be a huge cost savings. In the case of the diversion, negotiating and finding those low rates will save local taxpayers more than $470 million. There's more to the financial picture than the funding and financing, though. There's also reducing the risk of losses and inflation. Let's say you decide to add an addition to your home. You hire a contractor, who probably has subcontractors, too and pay them the first 50% so work can begin. They come in and get started, but then they disappear, and your money disappears with them. By using a public-private partnership, or P3, the project is competitively awarded to a developer who takes on the risk of the design, construction, and operation of the project. They only get paid after achieving milestones in construction, and later, successful operation and maintenance of the diversion. That means that nothing gets paid until the work gets done. That's some pretty strong motivation to get to work, and that's exactly what's happening now. With the funding and financing in place, the pace of construction picked up in 2022, and will continue until we can ensure protection for our communities in 2027. This means that we can say goodbye to sandbags and the high cost of fighting major flooding. <laughs>